Hi, everyone, and welcome to the race's first ever virtual elite athlete panel. During these unprecedented times, the race has remained committed to delivering the most amazing virtual experience possible. And I have no doubt that today's panel will exemplify that. We have six absolutely amazing athletes joining us for today's conversation, which we have titled, We Are All Runners. And we look forward to hearing from each of them. I will briefly introduce each athlete and then I will turn the spotlight on them as we begin today's discussion. Shawana White is the reigning two-time champion of the race half marathon. She is the fifth fastest American-born black woman to run the marathon. She holds a marathon PR of two hours, 45 minutes, 19 seconds. And she is the first American-born black woman to complete 15 marathons in under three hours. She is a physical education teacher and I'm pretty sure she also holds the record for the most smiles and dance moves exhibited on a single Instagram page. Welcome to the discussion, Shawana. <laughs> that was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. We're happy to have you. Um, Peyton Thomas is the fourth fastest American-born Black woman to run the marathon. She was also the only American-born Black woman to participate in the 2020 Olympic marathon trials, a race she qualified for in her debut marathon at CIM with a time of two hours, 42 minutes, 57 seconds. It should also be noted that she accomplished all of this while pursuing her PhD in marine biology. As our youngest athlete on the panel, I think it's safe to say she has a promising future ahead of her. Welcome to the discussion, Peyton. Thank you so much, Darrell. <laughs> I'm excited to be here as well. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Brandon Johnson is a Hoka, Hoka One One field rep and a 2020 Olympic trials marathon. He also qualified for the Olympic trials at CIM in what was also his debut marathon with a time of two hours, 18 minutes, 21 seconds. He's a former Boulder Boulder Citizens 10K champion. He's a hip hop historian. And according to my research, he currently retains the self-proclaimed title of the world's greatest beatboxer. Welcome to the discussion, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the conversation. Um, I know enough about each of you to know that you all have a somewhat unique origin story. So I think that's where I'd like to start today. Let's start today's conversation by sharing with us how and when you first discovered your love for running. Shawana, as the reigning champion, we'll start with you. <laughs> That's great. Um, well, I think my love for running, it all started in Atlanta, where I'm born, born and raised. And it started with my high school coach. He actually saw me in the office one day and asked me to run track. I had no idea about track. I mean, I know that was a sport. But I remember my first day at practice, I was just so excited to be there. And I was just really happy. And I just started running and, and I loved it. And, and I just kept going. Like, I think I fell in love with running in high school. And I continued in college. And then after college, I took a little break because I was kind of burned out from college. And then I started coaching and that um and night the flame back into me to want to get back out there to see how fast I can become by coaching my little people because they were working so hard and I was like wow and they were so happy to achieve their goals and I was like I need to get back out there and start achieving some goals too ah that's awesome thanks for sharing that with us um Peyton same question for you yeah um so I also found my uh, love for running in high school as well, um, but initially when I started running, I really hated it, uh, <laughs> and I didn't really start to love it until the end of my first year, um, and it was kind of when I uh, realized that I could be pretty good at running, and when I finally realized to, like how to control myself uh, <laughs> when running longer distances, um, because when I originally started, I started out in cross country and would walk um, in the middle of 
all of my races during my first season. Um, and that was kind of like the defining, <laughs> I guess that was just like the epitome of me in uh, my early years in high school and just, yeah, didn't make a great impression on people. But eventually when I figured out how to, how to actually run, um, I ended up actually loving it. And um, I started out just being gung-ho with volleyball um, and yeah, eventually just dropped that um, dream for pursuing running and also ran in college um, and then was going to take a break after college um, because like Shawana said, you get burnt out a little bit uh, with collegiate running, um, but then found a pretty awesome coach where I am now in North Carolina and just thought I'd stay with it and I'm glad I have, so. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Um, Brandon, same question for you. Uh, well, like the previous two, I guess I fell in love. I started running in high school. I wouldn't say I ever really fell in love with running. Um, it's been a love-hate relationship. I'm just kidding. But um, I grew up in Ventura, California, uh, Southern California, and it was a pretty rural area. So I always tell people it's like that movie McFarland, if you've ever seen it. And yeah. uh that's like one of the that movie like just really I resonate with that movie very well just because my teammates were very similar growing up in a like where Sunkist was uh, uh the nearest factory and you know we had avocados and and orange trees and I grew up behind a cilantro field so it was just like a very rural and unique area and I was just I thought I was uh, gonna play basketball my whole life but unfortunately uh puberty never really took me that direction with my height so um, I accidentally fell into running through my history teacher who kind of made fun that the fact that, you know, I thought I was this big time baller at like five foot two. And um, so he challenged me to come out. And so I ran my first 5K with the cross country team in a pair of Jordans. And, uh, you know, I like stayed with his top dudes and he's like, hey, you're actually pretty good at this. And I didn't, that was probably my sophomore year. And then my senior year, I didn't really take it too seriously until, um, I actually, he kind of motivated me and made me stick with it. And even after that, I wasn't planning on running in college. And I went to a junior college where my coach came to me and asked me to run again. And uh, I just was like, okay, I think I can do this. And I eventually transferred to a school in Denver where I've been for the last 12 years and competed at Metro State downtown Denver, which it's just a whole nother world from when I started going back there in 2008. And then um, I just stayed in the running community out here at the time. So I'd like to think I'm an OG in the running game out here now. Uh, but it's just been something that you, once you really engulf yourself into it and immerse yourself around people that are all about that life, it's something that's hard to leave. And uh, Boulder and Denver has been a, like, it's been pretty good to me thus far in the running world and career wise and family and just establishing myself. So I don't plan on going anywhere and, I just kind of, you know, I always tell people running, running found me essentially. So that seems like a common theme, just listening to all three of you all story, um, just that you, you kind of stumbled into it, it seems like in, in high school and um, you all found that you clearly um, have a lot of talent. Um, so I'm glad that however you found the love for running um, or Brandon, I don't know if you're still looking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad you I'm, we're glad you're here we're glad you're here thanks for having me um so thinking back to the start of this year um I've known Shawana for a while now but certainly Peyton and Brandon I, I met you all earlier this year and I just it seems like so long ago like the excitement around the trials and the start yeah, of the started. year was so promising um and the excitement was so high and then obviously we have the COVID-19 pandemic um, and I don't think any of us could have anticipated at that time how this global pandemic would affect each of our lives. Um, so my next question is around that. Um, how has uh, the pandemic affected you um, and your running or your life? And um, how, how have you been able to maintain your motivation and or your fitness level? Or if you haven't, um, <laughs> let us know about that as well. Um, for this one, we'll uh, start out with Peyton. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a loaded question because it's been 
a really long time and um I feel like so much has happened um and like the first feeling that comes to mind when I think of uh just in general how I've been managing uh this entire time has just been like I've had this huge feeling of heaviness and it's weighed in on like all realms of my life but um it's also really taught me um more reasons why I go out and run um and also taught me more about um what more I want to be doing in my life um and so especially with running uh I mean everyone has their up and down days and I feel like even more so now during the pandemic uh, especially with like people were getting ready to um race these really big races like the Boston Marathon like I know so many people here that were really looking forward to doing that and then seeing people do their virtual Bostons like what was it last week um was really enlightening just to see people still have that drive to at least be able to run the distance but you know people had all of these goals um for the summer months and like into the fall and I did as well I was so excited to like after the trial is so excited to um do more marathons and lower my time and really prove that I could be in an elite group of women um and so having that uh just kind of abruptly stop <laughs> was pretty shattering but um in light of like all the other things that have been going on in the world uh it just kind of reminded me like how small of a a thing that is compared to um racial injustice and social justice issues and environmental issues and i mean my degree the program that i'm in is focused on marine biology and there are all of these large impacts um and so it's just a lot of things uh, <laughs> coming at you all at once and everyone's kind of reminded of it every day with social media and um running has kind of been a way for me to it's always been a way for me to relieve stress but it's also now been a form of protest for me especially um like I didn't even realize that it would be that but then just looking back on the spaces that I inhabit um I really see it and I'm going to use it as much as possible to be a form of protest um specifically in terms of racial injustice because um where i am in the country is not uh very friendly <laughs> towards people of color so um even having like spaces like this finding really awesome spaces with other black people is so encouraging especially in the running community and i didn't even realize i could have this um and so even having this pandemic and finding more of these spaces has been um really awesome and really helpful for me um and so sorry that wasn't only related to running but it <laughs> went into um, the running realm for me um so yeah no that that's all the way related because um i certainly asked not only how it impacted your running but your life and and i think that's a clear example of that um so with that um brandon well, same question for you as well how has um covid-19 uh pandemic affected your life and um how or if if you've been able to maintain your motivation and fitness level how have you been able to do it well um i think it definitely impacted everyone's life to a huge degree but it just really showed how we can do deal with it ourselves and gives us uh at the beginning of the pandemic i i was telling people if you did have a lot of time then you know you could use that time constructively and really focus on yourself or a hobby or something like loss that you haven't done before and that's something that i really had the opportunity to do at the beginning of the pandemic is just you know read more books and draw and play music and just have fun being human and not really work working and running and focusing in on those two things and just having the blinders on and that was a huge relief at first but then as we got further along into things and um you know as th as things transpired i think it was you know just kind of looking at myself in the mirror and where i've come and how far i've come and like peyton mentioned finding spaces 
where I didn't think existed or avenues and people that I've never met before that are very similar to what I thought I was pretty unique about. And that was pretty cool. Um, just to have, be able to talk with uh, you guys back in Atlanta and the run duo and staying in touch with Tess. And that, that's just given me a little bit more sense of purpose, especially on the platform that I have that I didn't even know existed until I start talking to you guys. And that really opened my eyes and made me feel pretty special inside that I could have that platform to uplift and talk to people that I didn't even know were watching me. So it made me conduct myself differently in how I do things and how I operate in the public eye, especially in the black community. And um, as far as running, <laughs> um, I think I took a much needed break. Um, but I always, I'm like Jay-Z when it comes to running, you know, I always talk about retiring and then I, I come back for another training run. So um, out of nowhere, I decided to start training again within the last few weeks. And I think Tess had something to do with that because she asked me to be a part of this panel. And I was like, well, I don't think I can get into half marathon shape that quickly. And she's like, just do the 5k. I was like, okay, I'll do the 5k. And thinking I was just going to take it easy and have fun, you know, like I started going all out and start training like I did and I'm like oh man so we'll see where this leads but um I definitely got a much needed mental break and had time to reevaluate if this is something that I want to continue to do or focus on my career and I definitely think I have a lot more in the tank to keep on going so that's it was nice to be able to take this break and I've been very fortunate that's awesome man I'm glad we can be a part of uh, adding that that uh, additional motivation for you too Appreciate you. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, Shawana, same question for you. Um, the start of this pandemic, I was, I was pretty excited at first because, well, I still am kind of excited, but I was excited because I was going to be able to train like a professional runner. But I can't say I was feeling that way to begin of the um, pandemic because, as many people know, I love to race. And I had a bunch of races lined up that I was really excited to run because I just turned 40 and that makes me a master's runner. So I was like, I am about to really put myself out there and more people are going to be able to recognize me and maybe that will inspire them to get into distance running because that's what I've been doing ever since I started running because I always noticed that I was the only black girl out there running and I'm like, where are all the black girls? I mean, I knew they was in the sprints. So, like, I always seek out and try to find out about other runners and secretly tell podcasts, you know, put this person on or put that person on. Like, I had no idea about Brandon, but I was like, wow, there's more people. This is so awesome. But anyway, um, I went on a tangent. I don't know where I was going with that. But, yeah, at first I was a little sad because – I wasn't able to run races. So I was like, okay, I got to think of some kind of way to challenge myself. So I started off um, the pandemic doing the David Goggins challenge, which is four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So I did that and I was pretty excited. And I was like, okay, this really jumpstart my fitness. Now I can live my life as a pro runner, eat, sleep, run, repeat. And so and that was really fun along the way. And I also had the opportunity to help my friend out because she was trying to run a fast time for her virtual half marathon. So I was excited about that. I did that. And then all of a sudden, I was like, you know what? I, my knee has been bothering me for a while now. This is the perfect time to see what's going on before it lead into something bad. So I started going to my chiropractor. She tried to work on it. It didn't work out. So then she sent me in for an MRI. And then after the MRI, she was like, you need to go see um, a specialist. I mean, well, a bone and joint doctor, I think that's what it's called. I went and saw him. And then he didn't really give me good news. He basically said, oh, you have arthritis in your knee and you're going to need surgery, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, no, there's no way. I mean, I know my knee is hurting because I fell multiple times during the school year, like, I mean, during the, um, during the year. And so after that, I was like, you know what, I got to figure out what's wrong. I mean, I know the arthritis is not what's causing the pain. And so eventually 
I started going to PT and um, um, we was able to figure it out. And so far, um, like we was discussing beforehand, I was able, I just started back training. So I'm really excited about that and trying to get back in shape. And during that process, when I was out in the beginning of the pandemic, I was doing a, a lot of protesting um, because of the uh, Ahmaud Aubrey situation, because that really made me think like, is it really safe for me to be out here running? I never thought about not being safe because I'm always a risk taker since that, you know, I love to run races. So I practically just run whenever I want to, dark. I mean, people always tell me don't run in the dark. But I mean, after seeing what happened to him in broad daylight, I'm like, wow. And so, yeah, so that, that really, that really just motivated me that motivated me more to try to get more black runners out in the world. And that's when I started my Instagram live. I was just interviewing a bunch of different black runners. Peyton was one of my runners on my Instagram live show. So that's what I've been doing during the pandemic. I don't know. I just went around a lot of circles. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that was perfect. I think um, and I really appreciate you sharing all of that with us. We're glad that you're um, getting back healthy, because I'm sure, as you know, we need your spirit out here. You have a very, very unique spirit, Shauna. So you you feed the running community in a, in a unique way. So we're we're, we're going to need you around. <laughs> you don't have oh. a choice. And one more thing that I go did for it during the pandemic. Um, I had reached out to Hoka. Um, Brandon worked for Hoka. I was reaching out with hope that it would put me on as a sponsor athlete. But they decided to make me ambassador, and I was like really excited about that because I figured once I once the races come back, and once I become one of the top masters runners in the United States, maybe I could move up to uh, sponsor athlete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, look at that connection right there. Brandon's the plug. See how this all works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my next question, and all of you sort of touched on this a little bit, in that. Um, I mean, just to be honest, y'all are just, y'all are at the top. You know, we see you all as all elite athletes and the ability that you all exhibit, it puts you in spaces that, you know, maybe the rest of us more recreational runners can't get in. And I've just been noticing, even in researching you all, the spotlight, how heavy is shining on you. You're in new rooms, you're doing more interviews, uh, you're, you're really being put out forward facing in the public. With that, and considering everything that's going on in uh, uh, the black community, I know Shawana, you just mentioned um, the Ahmad Arbery situation. Uh, do you feel sort of like compelled or do you feel the tug to sort of um, elevate the black voice, to elevate the issues that are affecting the black community at large? Is that something you feel more intentional about? Um, and I'll, I'll pass that one to Brandon first. Um, well, I, I think that's a great question just because, um, before I didn't really, I knew that I was, I recognized myself as being one of the only black persons in this space and I didn't really take pride or, you know, mention it or even, it wasn't that much of a thought for me until I started getting closer to the trials and, you know, we're we haven't been any stranger to danger we've always seen and knew these things existed even before a lot of people realized that black lives still mattered this year so um just you know in areas and spots all across the country and i think shawana and peyton both said it they live in areas where you know it's south of the mason dixon and um you just have to be a little bit more aware for things like that and uh, i live in an area where it is actually pretty right white right wing conservative and you know i live in colorado but it's deemed a blue state but once you get further out in the middle of nowhere it, it gets real conservative real quick and i kind of knew that i took that risk and that's part of the reason why i'm here because that's the change that we need to see you know and uh even though it makes my mom feel a little uneasy and everything and i know that i'm represented in a corporate level in this space as well, as, as well as just being a distance runner. 
I think that um, with everything that has transpired in the last few months that I've, I, I see myself as someone that has to speak, but only at the right moments and at the right time, I don't want to seem like I'm too outspoken or I'm beating a dead horse and opportunities like this right here, right now, I think is great opportunities to be able to speak on anything that I had to deal with or listen to anything that and open my eyes. And I think um, that's kind of how I've been dealing with it more instead of, you know, being more socially active and protesting because <clears throat> I do live pretty in a pretty rural area and I haven't, I wasn't as active protesting as a lot of my friends were. And um, I, I had to kind of choose my battles a little bit differently, especially, um, you know, dealing with my own family and stuff that I have in my personal life. So um, I think that was part of the question, right? Um, <laughs> um, so I, with everything going on, I definitely feel like that has even motivated me more to start keep, to keep training and keep running just because um, I've since the last few weeks, I've had so many people reach out to me and tell me how they recognized me and saw me running or doing something in the community. And it's really motivated them. And it really, I had no idea until they actually did. And that means like the most to me, that's like, what life's about, you know? And that's what I was like, okay, now I'm kind of finding my purpose in life when I'm always questioning my down days and what I'm doing here. And then people reach out and say stuff like that. Then I'm like, wow, I really do have to conduct myself in a different manner and be a positive life in my community and around my family. Oh, that's awesome, man. You're definitely, um, just to reiterate what you were saying, you're definitely an inspiration um, for all of us. And I think that um, I, I'm sympathetic to the fact that you're you're in unique spaces where you have to find that balance between you know elevating the issue but then you know you're i get that as you explain it, it makes sense to me you're, you're kind of like walking that fine line of knowing when to step forward and when and when not to um so as you struggle with that just know that every decision you make is 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 an important one and it's one that you have an entire community behind you on so um, I appreciate, appreciate every single effort that you make. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so I have, in the past, I would never talk about issues plaguing the black community. And that's being honest because I felt like, and in some spaces still feel like, even if I said something, no one would really listen, which is really unfortunate or you just get gaslighting and um, I still kind of feel that way a little bit in a sense of where I am right now but I'm definitely like since the trials have been way more vocal um, about issues and it's not like I never knew about them it's just that I never knew that it was okay for me to speak about them um, and that's just another form of oppression, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, so being in this elite athlete space and being able to talk about the issues, um, I've been given, at least like in the past few months, um, some really awesome opportunities to speak on those issues. And it's been really liberating. And um, at, like even just speaking about my own experiences in different spaces and then telling people like what I see around me or telling people that I run with um, my perspective on things versus their perspective and the way that we view um, like social interactions or racial relations. And um, that has been, like I said, really liberating and, um, but then again, like at the same sense, I mean, I, I know I can't speak on the experiences of everyone in the black community. And I think that's like also just another thing in itself where um, sometimes when we get in these spaces, we can kind of feel like we are, like we have to represent a whole group of people when really we're just individuals and we should be treated as individuals. <laughs> and, but unfortunately, like, in a lot of the spaces where we're in, where it's like, okay, we finally get a seat at the table. 
now we have to speak for everyone that is like me and but it's like if you didn't if you weren't there to speak on any sort of those issues then no one at that table would really know or understand um and so it's kind of like I guess a bit of a love hate thing where you are experiencing a little bit of a burden but it's also extremely liberating in a sense when you're given opportunities and even if you're not given opportunities, at least for me, I've just intentionally been more bold because I'm really known to be very quiet <laughs> natured. And, um, and like people are always like telling me to speak up all the time and because uh, I do have a very quiet voice. And so I'm finally speaking up, but I'm speaking up about things that like really actually matter and that people should listen to. Um, and so that's been really nice. Thanks for sharing that pain. Uh, you brought up some great points that, again, I, I deeply feel you on those. Um, again, just trying to figure out when to do it and when not to do it. And you made a really good point about the unnecessary uh, burden of maybe like people having the, uh, the idea that you represent an entire body of people. Um, but I do think those conversations are important. I'm glad you all are doing that. I promise, I, I said to myself, I wouldn't talk a lot, but I just know, like I've been in that space, not particularly as a runner, but um, I was in uh, leverage uh, finance and which is just not a lot of black people in that industry. And I remember, um, you know, you just apply for a job and then you're in a department and literally you're the only black person out of 90 something. And, you know, and it's not that they're everyone, like they're bad people or something like they're awesome people, but they just never consider what it might feel like on the other side until you ask them like, you know, just imagine you go to work for a company, like a finance company, and you realize you're the only white person. And there's like 90 something black people. And every lunch break, they're talking about their favorite rap albums. And you're like, you just lost in the sauce. Like that is sort of a picture of, of how we are sometimes. So I think it's good to raise that awareness because then you, we find advocates on the other side as well. Once people are aware, the good people, they, they, they make proper adjustments. Um, so part of the, us being home and, and, and more remote during this, this uh, period of COVID-19, uh, I personally have found myself finding out new things about myself. So I'm gonna ask you that, now that you've been in the house or you've been away from school or work, have you found yourself um, picking up new hobbies or learning things about yourself that you didn't already know um we're gonna go back to shawana on this one you get the first crack at this um well let's see i think what i have i kind of already known this about myself but it was more present um i learned that i really enjoy being around people and I miss that sense of community that you have when you go to the races, like just seeing just random people, like I just enjoy that whole atmosphere. And um, I think um, another thing that I learned about myself is that, you know, I can really stay up late. Like in first I thought, I thought I was a person that always like go to sleep early, but during this pandemic, I realized that, you know, you can stay up late because you can wake up late because being, you stated earlier that I'm a PE teacher. So we were out from March to August and we're practically still kind of out because right now I'm doing virtual PE, teaching PE from a computer. So it's still, yeah, interesting. <laughs> All right, thanks for sharing that. I feel you on the virtual PE. I have I have two boys, um, uh, eight, nine year old, and so and I'm working from home. So every day when I start to hear the boom, 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 I'm like, oh, <laughs> it must be a PE. <laughs> so um, I, I appreciate the struggle. Um, Peyton, I'll, I'll toss this one over to you. Same question. Have you learned anything new, picked up any new hobbies, any new revelations during this time? 
Um, so I definitely realized I actually enjoy being around people more than I thought I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I, I mean, I'm a scientist, so I like to stay in my own little <laughs> bubble. Um, but it, I, I learned that mostly through um, listening to a lot of podcasts that are very conversational. And I'm like, wow, conversation is great. Like people are awesome to talk to <laughs> and just like learn everyone's stories. And um, there's this one, oh my gosh, I don't know why, The Moth. So I started listening to this one podcast that uh, used to be, well, I think they're still holding like virtual uh, versions of this, but it's this series called The Moth. It's been going on for decades. I don't know if anyone's heard about it, but they have a podcast with it where um, they have these uh, groups in larger cities where anyone can go to these groups and you um, write your name on a piece of paper and you stick it in a hat and then um, the host picks your name out of the hat and you go up on stage and you tell a story about your life that's centered around a certain theme. Um, and so listening to stories like that, um, and they don't have to be really heavy, like a lot of them are really lighthearted. Uh, it's just been nice just to like recognize what meaningful conversations can be and uh, how everyone has their own story. And it's just something that you don't really get the time to listen to um, when you're so busy with everything going on in your life. You're really only focused like, like Brandon was saying a while ago, like you have blinders on <laughs> when you're just doing your daily thing. Um, and then I started gardening a little bit. It's uh, dwindling down now um, because of all of the rain and summer is leaving. Um, and then I've, I started making kombucha last year, but um, I took a little hiatus and started making it again um, when the pandemic started. And so that's been really fun because uh, you have this uh, sort of mother uh, yeast and bacteria culture that uh, basically grows throughout the entire time that you're making these batches. Um, and so you can give it to other, like split it off and give it to other people and help other people make kombucha. And so it's been really nice just to like pass on this practice to some of my friends um, and build a little kombucha crew. So <laughs> I coined that and my friends think that it's really dorky, but I really like it. So. I don't know, when you put up the quotes, I assumed that was like a trademark, so. Yeah. <laughs> Trademark Peyton Thomas. <laughs> nice, so, yeah. nice. You'll have to bring some to the race whenever we go back live. Uh, totally, I'll have tons. <laughs> Holding you too. <laughs> All right, Brandon, uh, same question for you, sir. Well, oh, man. <clears throat> I would say for me, it's been more of the little things that I didn't focus on while I was so active leading up to the trials. Um, just like, uh, I, I guess I lived a pretty unhealthy lifestyle for a runner, always being on the road. So cooking is something that I started to try to attempt. I think I'm fairly good at it. Um, just being at home a lot and being able to grocery shop and everything being closed down. And then <clears throat> I start doing like more core and strengthening, which when I wasn't running, that was kind of giving me sanity was just like working on, like I had a couple injuries leading up to the trial. So um, I just figured that while, you know, no, there were no races in the near future that I could just focus on getting healthy and just, you know, feeling a little bit like a normal human because I was so lightweight and probably the lightest weight I've been my whole life leading up to the trials. And I put on probably like 20 pounds, uh, three months into it which most of it was probably beer weight, but you know, um, that's another <laughs> story. Um, <laughs> but, uh, my roommate and I, we start focusing on making some music. Like we were really into funk and old school and we'd stay up super late and just like dissect old hip hop or hip hop beats that have samples and like try to figure out what samples it's from. And, that was like when our biggest hobbies were just kind of like trolling samples from things. And it got a little crazy. We tricked out our whole basement into a studio, which 
is now like our new hangout spot, which I think is pretty cool. And um, just, just trying to like, I live in a pretty open space. So just like really focusing on me and like getting my work done, but just the little things, cooking, cleaning, just paying attention to the small details, reaching out to friends that I haven't talked to in a long time, I think was a huge one just because some people, I guess they, you know, everyone feels like they're forgotten about, but then once you make that first connection with somebody, then you kind of keep it going. Um, especially on Instagram, because I always send memes through Instagram and sometimes I'll just be like, oh, someone would appreciate this. And then I'll reconnect with someone I haven't talked to in a really long time, just through some some DMs. I think that stands for dank memes or oh, direct messages. I think that's what it said. <laughs> so yeah, stuff like that. Uh, really cool, man. Um, yeah, keeping in contact is something that uh, I've tried to work on as well during this time. And, and uh, a lot more face-to-face stuff, face to face uh, stuff, you know, more right. FaceTime chats and phone calls. Uh, these days. I, I will say that um, if things probably didn't close down like this, we, I don't feel like I would have been in much contact with any of you guys, honestly, unless I came back to the race, which would have been really awesome. But um, I've gotten to meet so many more people via Zoom. And there's, you always got to look at the silver lining of things as well, because it's so easy to be negative. And I think uh, that's rare for people to just like always be positive no matter what's going on. And if anything running or being black in a, a really not so black space has taught us is, you know, just to be positive and how easy it is even when things aren't looking so great. Indeed, man. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so as uh, Peyton sort of referenced earlier, we're, believe it or not, on the back end of 2020, um, Finally, because I'm, I'm really done with this year. Uh, so <laughs> as we are, as we're, we can see 2021 coming, have you all started thinking about 2021? Like, are, are you at the point where you're starting to look at the calendar and, and you know, get some ideas about how you want to attack the next year? Or are you still sort of just kind of dealing with, dealing with today? Um, so for that one, I'm going to start out with you, Peyton. Um, I guess it's kind of a mixture of both. I think mostly my uh, foresight into 2020 is based on traveling to a lot of places. <laughs> I'm just like, I hope that by this time that everything will be open again. I'll just book a flight <laughs> now because <laughs> flights are so cheap. Um, but I haven't really thought that much about races, I guess, because I... Uh, I don't really know what's in store for a lot of races right now, but I have a general plan um, if everything goes well um, to do a mixture of trail and road races because I want to kind of break into the trail running space as well. Um, And yeah, so like with that, it would mostly be 10, 20, or 50 Ks, and then still continue on my marathon pursuits uh, to lower my times, because I really feel like I actually love that race, and I never thought that I would (laughs) love the marathon (laughs) distance, so um, it would be really awesome to sort of break into an elite marathon race, um, maybe a couple next year, but who knows which ones they'll be, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the 50k you're doing uh, that you have coming up is that trail? Yes, um, okay. so that's a trail race. Um, I'm actually really excited about it because. So I don't know if it's okay to say this, <laughs> but I. If um, it's not, we'll take it out. But I'm sure. Okay, <laughs> um, but I'm talking to um, the trail team coordinator for the North Face, and they're potentially going to add me to the national team. Um, and so with that, they would pay for my travel to these trail races so I could get more access to um, these opportunities. And so they're kind of doing that with this trail race. So I'm going, um, I had a quick turnaround in training. Like I just started training on Sunday uh, <laughs> like <laughs> after, cause I was supposed to do this 5k race uh, with Shawana. Um, and so I was really training for that. And then I found out about this 50k literally last week and I was like, okay, guess I'm doing it. And it's in, like two weeks so (laughs) we'll see but I'm going there to see just um how I feel I don't think there's much pressure in it but I'm meeting a couple of North Face athletes there to get more of a sense of the team 
Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, Knock those barriers down, Peyton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for most people that would be um, maybe going into a race unprepared, but based on what I understand from you, that's just kind of the way you roll. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Sure I was just like, uh, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> I paid a 50K. <laughs> so. Very nice, very nice. Fine. Speaking of trails, it's funny, Brandon, I meant to mention this earlier. I realized in hindsight that the first time I actually saw you was on uh, Sage Kennedy's uh, channel. Uh, I yes. didn't know who you were at that time. And I like later on, I was like, oh, that's the same guy. That was doing the. Uh, There's a couple of Brandon Johnsons, so you know it gets confusing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you're you're a celebrity, man. <laughs> um, well, I I I figured I hit the celebrity status when David Rodisha started following me on Twitter, but I think he got confused with Brandon Johnson, the 800 meter runner from UC Irvine, <laughs> who ran 145, and you know that happens. Uh, quite often. Uh, there's another Brandon Johnson who is a hurdler at CU. We went to school at the same time and people always get us confused, but he's a little bit, bl bit bigger than me. So, you know, um, it's a common name. It's a common name. Is he still following you though? Uh, I assume so. I haven't really ah, posted anything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really posted anything. I was like, oh, David Rodice is following me. It counts, but, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so same question for you. What do you, what are you thinking about 2021 or, or are you thinking about 2021? Uh, well, like I was mentioning earlier and staying positive, I think right now is like one of those times where you practice all of those cliche mantras of taking things day by day and just, you know, every day is a blessing and all that stuff. So I have hopeful, you know, plans for the future and, I always want to stay in some kind of shape where I'm not just going to like have to be like Rocky and just, you know, will myself back to good shape. So, um, I mean, I guess I can, I told Tess that I would tell people that I want to go for the world record in the basketball mile. <laughs> and that's kind of, uh, where I've been at with things where I want to kind of, you know, train for something fun, but also challenging and unique and, so uh, I've been training for about six weeks now, but I just want to do stuff that is kind of fun. But, you know, Colorado still has a lot of trail races and low key races going down. So that's the beautiful thing about running is that you can get out to open spaces and social distance and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, if there's a trials or anything next year, I would like to try to see what I can do in the tin can the track because I'm like considered an old man now and I've never ran a 10k on the track before so you know maybe at the age the tender age of 33 I can debut on the track in the 10k and you know maybe qualify for the trials I don't know I was just keeping keeping it positive but you know small goals first and then yeah why not man the, <laughs> yeah. um 30 is masters on the track right <laughs> yeah it is no, it is. no seriously it is right? seriously it is yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's 40 on the roads, but it's 30 on the track. So you would actually be masters. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, don't worry, man. As they as don't see in the mail yet, though. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so, Shawana, same question for you. Huh. Well, you know, it's, it's really hard to playing out with the uncertainty going on. But um, I'm just basically, I just want to stay in shape. So I'm ready for any race that pops up. But currently, um, I'm training to run a fast mile in December. And then after that, I'll just transition over to try to get shape where I can run any distance on any given day. I'm really hoping that Boston will open up registration because that was one of my goal races for 2020, but unfortunately it didn't happen. And I chose not to participate in the virtual because I wanted my first Boston to be on the actual course. I wanted to experience everything that everybody else experienced and talk about. Like, I want to see if the hype is real. So I'm saving it. <laughs> mm. 
I feel your pain. I, I felt like I was in the absolute best shape of my life um, heading into this year's Boston. Like I, I felt untouchable and now it's all gone. <laughs> now yeah. I've, I've, I've put on my own weight just sitting around the house. <laughs> um, this mile that you have coming up in December, just for clarity, is that with or without a basketball? Without a basketball. I, Why not it's, with a basketball? It's, it's without a basketball. It's so funny because like in high school, I actually tried, I wanted to play basketball and my coach said, and this is his exact words, he said, "Why don't waste your time. Get to running. Oh. <laughs> he was right. Running is where it's been at. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Um, that is all of the questions that I had for you all today. Um, but I do want to leave some space in case there's something um, that any of you wanted to say um, and didn't get an opportunity to because I didn't ask you a question. So I'll just do a quick round robin um, and I'll go in the order that I have on my screen. So we're going to go uh, with Peyton first. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, we didn't mention the charities, I guess, and um, the one that I picked was the Deep South Center for Environmental Justice, and it's just this um, awesome nonprofit that does a lot of research surrounding environmental justice and uh, brings opportunities to people in a lot of these hard-hit communities, especially with, like, climate change effects, um, allowing them to, like, vocalize their concerns and learn how to approach their politicians and, like, the local people that determine all of these different um, policies, like actually advocate for themselves and like know what they can do for their own communities. Um, yeah. That's awesome, Payne. Thanks for elevating that. Uh, Brandon, same question for you. Um, is there anything you wanted to say that you haven't gotten a chance to yet? Uh, I just like to thank you again for this opportunity and space to be able to talk and come together and, you know, share our stories and have this community. Um, I was able to speak with Tess about partnering and just trying to uplift the race any way I could and with Hoka. So, um, you know, I'm completely grateful for being a part of this panel and we're able to donate some swag to the actual packet pickup day for anyone that uh, in the area that shows proof of voter registration so they can come and pick up their packet and then they'll have some premium Hoka swag waiting for them. So we had that done. And um, yeah, again, you know, just trying to spread that awareness for, you know, we got these are crazy times and we need to get out and vote and stay active. And, you know, allowing us to have this space to be able to talk and come together has been a huge blessing in my life. And hopefully it helps and impacts others. Absolutely, man. That's really dope. And again, um, I think I speak for all others when I say, yes, it does impact us. So we appreciate you. Um, Thank you. Shawana, same, same thing. Um, anything you wanted to say that you haven't had a chance to yet? Mm -hmm. I, oh, well, I was thinking about that question where you said about what did you, something you did during the pandemic. Oh, one thing that I did do during the pandemic was travel. Just like when Peyton said the tickets were cheap, I was able to, actually book a trip out to Arizona, Flagstaff, I mean, Flagstaff, Arizona. Ah, uh, nice. That was really fun. I, I stayed there for a whole week. And I also was able to visit Bryce Canyon while I was out there too. So that was really fun. And then going back to voting, I'm actually participating in the Women Run for All Relay. That's what Me I'm too. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's pretty. Uh, that's really cool. That's really cool. That's with um, with Harlem Run, right? With Allison, to Allison, see yeah, Bill. yeah. Uh, very cool. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, so I just want to thank each of you again. Um, y'all are amazing. I can't say that enough. Um, I really appreciate you all taking this time out. Uh, to speak with me. The race appreciates you. And I'm sure everyone that views this um, appreciates you as well. Y'all keep rocking it. Keep knocking down doors for us. Um, because every time y'all win, we win. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, y'all be blessed.
Thank you. Thank you. Right.